Alrighty, part two on the H. Um, about ready to split the tractor here. I take the starter out and there's one more bolt in here and I just got this bolt that's loose. I need to take it out and then try to roll it in half. Um, what I found was the number two rod. The bearing was all shot in it and it's really worn that bearing away and the crank looks about equally as bad. That bearing's about half as thick as it should be and it's got scar marks and everything else in it. So that's what was causing that hammering noise. Um, so we looked at a couple different options. It was going to be about 400 bucks to have the crank ground, uh, but I did a quick measure on it up in the tractor, and it is way past just being able to turn the crank down. Uh, it would have to be welded back up, um, and you know we're running more money there, you know, in a $1,200 tractor. Um, so we talked about. Uh, Possibly found one on Craigslist that was uh, I'm just going to replace it with, but then you don't know what you got there either. And this thing runs good other than this hammering noise and still has good oil pressure. Um, so what uh, we're going to do just to fix it on the cheap here, we're going to get a crankshaft out of a salvage yard and it'll be turned and they're going to turn it and everything else. And I can't remember, it was like 300 something. Um, for a crankshaft uh, and that then they turn it before they even mail it to you so that'll be all right just put a new set of bearings in it and go then and it'll know the bottom end will be good for a while uh, top end you know I mean just the heads probably you know valves are all right it runs all right uh, the only thing the other thing would be ring wear and you know for no more gets used or no harder than it gets worked you know it'll probably be all right so so we're going to split the thing here and see how the crane and the floor jack there, how this does. And one more bolt in here for anybody that would happen to be splitting these tractors. This is the second H I've split. I split one inch. It has been probably three or four years ago a guy had one that the uh, rear main seal was leaking pretty bad in and same type of tractor though except his is a wide front I think. Yeah it had a little belly mower on it and starter bolts because I did that on the other one I bolted the starter in and then had one bolt left over I was like oh crap And that dang bolt won't come out unless take the oil filter housing off, but that doesn't really matter. Now. these things
Well, that's loose. Okay, I think we got everything else ready to go and it is starting to split here. Dow pins out of there. Yeah, I just realized. <laughs> eh, hopefully that wouldn't want to fall over. Better push that back together <clears throat> for a second and uh, figure out a way to stabilize that. Alrighty, well we got her split off here. Um, some sawhorses just happened to be the perfect height. Slid them under the rails there and they fit right o over the top of the tires. And uh, let the air out of the front tires and the front end sat down on it. And then I set this end. I got a little tension on it yet. I'm going to get done working back here. Um, got the flywheel and stuff off and then I'll... Uh, Take it up. Actually, I might be able to take my engine stand and just run it on right there after I take the flywheel off. And I wouldn't even have to unhook the hoist. So I'll try that. But anyway, um, yeah, that's what I did. Worked out pretty well. I did put a strap running there on that front, just kind of hold at the top at the higher point there. Just give it three points of lift, and that really stabilizes it there. Alrighty, as you can see here, we got the engine all tore down, got the crankshaft out of it. Um, I was able just to loosen the bolts that hold the uh, rocker arms and everything, kind of let that drop down about a quarter inch, and then that let the lifters drop down enough I could pull the uh, camshaft out. This is the one that went kaput, uh, was making the knocking noise. I'll come back and I'll show you the bearing again. That was yesterday morning when I filmed that. Um, the bearing's just completely shot there on the number two rod. It didn't spin the bearing, but it just chewed it up something terrible. And there's, I think this thing, thing could have had more oil changes. It might have been part of the problem that caused it because there is some scoring and whatnot. Um, let me show you here on the crank. But, you know, it is who knows when the last time it was overhauled and just years and years and years and years and years of use um but anyway uh, it was this this rod journal here which is worn some i measured it and then comparing it to this rod journal um and you can see how it's not real shiny and it's pretty rough it's real scored up it's about this one's about fifty thousandths under this one and this uh rod journal or you know they can only turn they really only turn the crank about thirty thousands before it takes too much strength out of it and then at that they would either a you need to weld it up or find another crank um so there's this one would have to be welded up and you know we're just talking a lot of money to do that um There's kind of a definite line. It was really pushing down on that right there. And there's a real good ridge. You can even feel a finger right there. Um, but it had chewed it down enough. Even the edges of the rod had gotten into the crank. And it wasn't just the bearing riding on it anymore. You can see there it just made a mess of it. And none of the bearings look great or anything. So I just made a call, got another crank coming out from the same salvage yard. I uh, got the parts for Puzzle Tractor, which is back in the shop. 
Um, I'll explain that one here in a minute. But anyway, uh, they got them or getting a crank coming, um, and then I'll order bearings. Uh, probably be like 10 under, 20 under, 30 under, depending on how they ground it. Um, and by undersized, I mean the outer dimensions of the bearing will be the same, but they'll actually be a thicker bearing to accommodate for the smaller uh, crank journal size. That one's the one that went bad. And this one, I was just checking them, um, put the caps back on them to make sure that they had, it hadn't wallowed out any material out of this rod, and I was going to have to change that rod, which thankfully I don't half change the rod um, so I can don't have to take the head or any of that off save a little bit of work there uh, I'm going to show you how I just went about that that rod the rod that was bad uh, measured anywhere from 2.449 thousandths to uh, or inch 2.449 inches I go down to the thousandths mark there um, and then the highest measurement was uh, 2.452 inches, and that was 3,000, 3,007 inch out around, um, which I can't really find a spec if it, what they what the limit is. If it's out around more, then they got to do something about it or get a new rod. But uh, I'll probably put it back in and just run it because three thousandths isn't terrible, but. Um, and it's not like a real high performance engine anyways. And then I measured the next rod over which was uh, about the same numbers just to make sure that it was the, uh, just to make sure, just for comparison because I couldn't find an original spec in the book so I, that's what I was getting at. But anyway, I got this thing here, it's called a snap gauge. Um, you just loosen this handle on the end, these little dudes go out. And you have different sizes of these for different measurements. But anyway, put that in here. And it snaps. And you just kind of go back and forth and make sure you're holding it straight each direction. And you just kind of... And it'll find the center. It'll find the farthest part out. Um, or you can do it about any direction. I haven't really done this direction yet in this rod. This is a good one here. But anyway, you just kind of... Kind of find that there. Tighten the end of that back up just gently, and that'll kind of just drag a little bit as you pull it out, and then you can tighten it back up some more. Just lay it down right here, and then I'll take this uh, tool here. I can't. I think it's caliper. I don't know the names of these measuring tools very well. I know how to use them, but that's about it. Come in here and just put just so you feel some. There we go. Feel some resistance there, and it's just touching the snap gauge. And, uh, yep, about right in the same ballpark here. 2.451. So, that's how you measure those, anyways. And yes, this is a complete service manual for a farm all H. Look how thick that is. Ain't very thick. <laughs> it's not terribly descriptive, but well, heck, there you go. What is it? Twenty-four. Twenty-four pages. But that's not a very complex tractor. Heck, now you got service manuals on tractors if you can get a paper form. About you know that thick. So, Let's see, we got one for me and Dad's, well, for Dad's uh, 99 Ford. We got a 99 Ford service manual that cut for the pickups. comes in three sections, and it stands a stack about that tall, a paper stack that tall, and I'm not kidding. It's well over several thousand pages. Um, so anyway, uh, that's how you measure the rod journals, or the uh, rod bore. The uh, reason I got the 504 back in here, the guy said it was dripping gas out of the carburetor a little bit when the gas was left on. It was just sitting there, so I'm, uh, since I overhauled the carburetor, um, I probably didn't get the float set right in it or something, so I'm going to fix that one for him for free. Uh, warranty work, but 
so far that's the worst thing that's happened out of that whole project so or I guess the only thing that's been bad about it so I was pretty pleased with that and he's happy with it but anyway um I think I'll see how much video I got out of this section. So, thanks for watching.